So it's been a while, and Anytype's been through some changes. If you want to start using Anytype for your knowledge storage, it might seem like a bit of an arcane application. Well, don't worry, because once you have the basics down, it's really not that different from other note-taking apps. Let's get started. When you first open Anytype, you'll be greeted with a brand new vault. Quick note for anyone who wants a clean slate, you can make a new vault by clicking on your profile picture in the bar at the bottom and then clicking Create New. Here, you'll be greeted with a bit of an explanation of any type and some starter sets. Let's skip the default user's guide and I'll explain the concept of any type in 30 seconds or less. Okay, any type stores all of its notes as objects, which define what kind of properties a note has. Most notes are pages, which have properties like tags and the date that you create them, but you can also make more elaborate object types like books and store information like the author in the properties of that object. You can organize your objects by properties into sets or manually place them into different collections. Not too bad, is it? Any type might look like a lot, but there's really nothing here to be overwhelmed by. To put new information into your vault, there's a little plus button down here. If you click it, it will make a new note, but for now, right-clicking it will give you a menu. These are the kinds of objects that a new note can be. But wait, don't actually use the note option. Instead, click page. I'll explain why you want to do this in a little bit. Here on our new page, we can enter a title, choose an emoji, change the background, and start putting in some text. If you bring your cursor over to the left, you can move text around as blocks, which you can use to put things side by side or wherever you like. You can also click the bar on the left to format the text however you like. Now, take a good look at this page, because we're about to talk about that note option from earlier. If we make a new object and choose note, you'll see that there's no title of the note. This can get really annoying, especially if you're trying to search for this note, because it treats the whole content of the note like the title. To fix this, let's go up here to the Layout button, and here we can set how our note looks. Profiles are mainly for people, and Actions are for tasks, so let's use Page. And there we go, our note looks like the page we created earlier, but you can still see that it says the type is a note, not a page. Now why not just make lots of pages and never use object types? Well, you can stick to just one type if you like, but you'll miss out on the benefits of using multiple types. For example, we can quickly view all of our notes by clicking on the Notes option in this widget called Sets. Here we can see all of our note objects and quickly make a new one if we feel like this one get, is getting lonely. Once we get some notes for school taken down, we might want to put these on our school page. This is simple enough to do. Just type in a slash, and then if you start typing inline, you can click on the option for inline set. You can now make a new set this way, but for now, we'll just select the source of notes, and then it appears just like that. Now what happens when you start getting notes that aren't related to school? No problem, that's what collections are for. A set is like a filter. It shows you objects of a specific type or the specific relation. Collections are more like folders. You can put anything you want in them. We can put in a new inline collection the same way we put in an inline set, and this time we'll click the new collection and call this school notes. Then we can just go to one of our notes, click the three dots, choose add link to object, pick the school notes collection, and it'll appear just like that. Okay, let's go through some rapid fire tricks. With the slash command, you can format text, but you can also make lists make toggle lists, make callout blocks, and then you can change the emoji here, insert photos, videos, and files, embed a YouTube link, add a Facebook or Instagram post, put in a Google map location, or almost anything else that you can think of. Okay, enough with the basics of pages and sets. Let's talk about object types. We've looked at pages, notes, sets, and collections, but there's many other types that come with any type by default. In the library widget, you can view all of the object types that are installed, as well as some uninstalled ones that you can add. Each one comes with its own relations, which add more data on. For instance, this book type includes relations for the author, your rating, and its status for being read. And if you ever want to add a relation to an object, you can go to the Relations tab to see uninstalled relations or to make your own. Okay. Finally, let's make our own object type. We'll call it Lego Sets, and then click Create Type. We'll make some relations like piece count, theme, and year, and then click this button up here to make a template. We can use this little triangle to star some of the relations, which makes them show up under the title of the note. Last, we'll make this space open for an image of the box, and then line up some of the relations over here. Now, when we make an object of this type, we can easily fill it out with all of the information.
What a beauty. If anyone wants to PayPal me, I will buy it and I will do a review. Okay, that should be everything you need to know in order to set up your AnyType vault. If you ever need any inspiration, AnyType has a gallery of use cases that you can import into new vaults and explore. So check that out, link in the description. Best of luck and stay tuned for more.